hard inch HC second operation lathe. Uh, this unit is 440 only. That means it can only be wired 440. Um, this unit came in, uh, really the only issues with it was the brake needed to be adjustment, needed to be adjusted a little bit closer. And uh, all the motor pulleys got greased inside. This is old style technology, so you always have to make sure that you grease all your pulleys and all your grease joints in this variable drive. Otherwise, <coughs> you wear out everything in there. You got grease fittings here, you got grease fittings up above for your other uh, variable speed pulleys. Uh, the other thing that we did to this, I noticed when uh, I would engage the feeds, the feeds slept horribly. Uh, these are not, people don't realize, these are meant for light duty operation. So right now the feed is engaged, as you can see it's tight, but I can overcome it. Same with the other feed. It's tight, but you can overcut it. These are not meant for hogging material. This is for a light operation machine. Um, so what we had to do with this, because the clutches were slipping, is so we put the wrong oil in the apron. If you use the wrong oil, as you can see, these are the old plates. These are cork line clutch plates. It uh, dries the cork off very, very hard, and then they don't do what they're supposed to do. <coughs> Each uh, feed has two clutches, as you can see. There's four clutches here, and they got replaced. Uh, the inside of the apron looks like it's brand new. There's very, very little wear. Um, the lube system does still work, as you can see. There's plenty of lube on the bed here. <coughs> Let's give it a couple pumps up. As you can see, it stays up. And it will slowly go down. So this is your fill right here for your lube system, and this is your fill right here for the apron on the side. And there is a sight glass here that shows you your level for your apron. And there is a sight glass here on the side, which is full right now, that's why it looks dark. And that is for your lube system. So when filling the apron or the lube system, make sure that you take note of the special specifications of this machine or you can do damage to the internal components. <clears throat> this also has a, a stock hardage uh, guard, splash guard. It does tilt down, tilt up. It also has this piece too. It was off when it came in. We didn't put it on because we kind of see why it's a little obnoxious. Actually, would go. Yeah, it actually sits on here like this. So this is just another splash guard. This unit does have a coolant pump. This is the coolant nozzle right here. It is set up for coolant. Um, you are going to have to put just so you know, get a piece of hose, put a little bit of plumbing on it, so you have it the length that you need it. You open up this door here. It comes with a full setup of collets. As you can see, they're in nice shape. We cleaned them up a little bit, but they pretty much look like that when they came in. We also have an attachment. <clears throat> this is a cut-off attachment that this goes on the nose. You would take this one off and put this one on so you can cut off parts if you're doing piecework. It also comes with a box of miscellaneous tool holders. As you can see, there's various tool holders here. It comes with collets and some other uh, collet accessories. So this all comes with them. Other other uh, bar turners and things like that. If you come over here, take a look inside the cabinet. The cabinet is all stocked. Everything is in excellent shape inside of the electrical cabinet. Everything works like it should. Now over here, <clears throat> this is your coolant pump, on or off. This will only come on when you have your stop button pulled out. When your stop button is lit up, and that means that you have power. When you have power, you have one, two, three gear range. So you can see here, you speed one to two, 600, 200. You have one to two ranges here. Over here is for three. This is your third range of speed. So what you would do, we right now we are in all the way in one. So we're going to be looking at the bottom number, 125 to 420. You would go forward. Right now you're at your slow speed. You can hear the variable speed drive moving. And the speed moves by quarter increments. As you can see all the lines, that's when the variable speed drive moves. And if you need to slow it down, you go all the way back down. Now before you ever shift ranges, three, one, two, three, always make sure the spindle comes to a complete stop. So go into two. Now we're going to be using the range is 375 to 1250. If 
you want your brake to come on, right now I have the brake in the off position. You put brake on, as you can hear the brake engages. As you can hear the brake is off, you saw the spindle move. Brakes on, brakes off. <clears throat> now we're going to come over to their third range of speed. You would put it on three. Now we're going to be using 1050 to 3000. On. As you can see, even in high range, it sounds excellent. There's no vibrations or anything coming down from the motor cabinet. Because you're in the column, set up vibrate a little bit. See the brake works good. Go back to one. Come over here to turn your feet on. The spindle must be engaged. You're going to select left to right. You see the carriage assembly is moving to the left. You can speed that up. You have a variable speed controller here. You have fast speed rate. This is all the way to your slowest rate. As you can see, we're still moving. See the feeds work good, I can hold on it. But if I hold it too much, as you can see, I can make it stop. I said these machines are meant for light duty cuts, these are not meant for hogging. As you can see, it also reverses. Variable speed motor works the same way. Turn this feed off. Now the feed motor can be running without the feeds engaged. So if you need to stop, back it up. It's your slowest rate of feed. This is your fastest rate of speed. The turret also indexes with this lever and clamps. Down indexes, up clamps. So it cannot move. As you can see, it indexes every station perfectly. And if for some reason you have a station that is getting loose, you can come over here and you can actually recenter the station right here. So you can choose where center needs to be if you need to offset center. Or if for some reason if the turret is a little bit off center, you can bring it back to center. So you can adjust each station where you want it to be on center. Right now everything is on center. Well, here you have your binders for your carriage. This is just so you can't move the hand wheel. As you can see it works good. All this unit will come with a, with a manual and it will come with a maintenance manual. This will tell you what oil to use in the model, and like I said, it is very important that you use the right type of uh, lubricants in this unit, or you will do damage to the internal parts of the machine. This is our hardest second operation blade.